Good morning, guys and gals. Froggy here. This is uh, my son's condo and his garage door opener. And it is not opening and closing the garage door. And we're going to fix it. Uh, the first thing was to uh, check whether the chain was moving and whether the safety was engaged. The safety is, uh, this is the emergency door latch. I caught a safety. If this was pulled down, down is disengaged, up is engaged. Hold on, let me show you. There, that's disengaged right there. And that's engaged when it goes up like that, okay? Uh, I've got the remote here. I hit the remote. Nothing is turning, so the problem is down inside the box there. See, the sprocket is not turning. So we're going to take this box off and take a look inside. Just shut it off using the remote. I already started working on it. I got uh, maybe one more screw here. Okay, I need two hands. Well, that diagnosis is pretty easy. I don't even have to take it all the way off. I can see that this cheap plastic uh, gear is broken. Uh, so either we got to buy a new plastic gear if I can. I'm going to take it off the rest of the way and see how it um, attaches. Or we'll have to replace this whole box here. Um, which usually will also come with a new rail and a new chain and everything. We would put one of those uh, belt drive instead of a chain because they're much quieter. Okay, let's get this off the rest of the way. So there it is uh, all the way off. Let's look at how it's attached to the uh, axle. So it would be in a, a horizontal position there and it would be spinning around from that uh, other gear. Uh, somebody knows in the comments, you can put down what type of gear that is, that gear teeth rubs up against. Okay, so here's what I see. Um, to replace that gear, there's two roll pins right here that hold the gear onto the shaft. And way up there, maybe you can see it, there's a little uh, washer, a split washer that holds this shaft down from going up like that. So you'd have to just pop off that split washer. Um, well, there's another word for that. It's not a split washer. Maybe it's, uh, put it down in the comments if you guys know what it is. And then take this little loose clip here. That's just a plastic clip. Take that off. This would drop down and then you could raise that shaft up enough to slide the new gear on and then put it back down. The new gear would engage with that spur. I think that's called a spur gear maybe over there. Put this back down, clip this back on, clip that washer back up there and it should be done. Uh, you might have to loosen up the chain to get the chain off the sprocket on the top. Uh, let me show you that. So you see what I mean? You have to get the chain off of the sprocket so the sprocket can go up. And to do that, there's an adjustment on the chain. Uh, it's actually pretty tight right now. That's a, a pretty tight chain, but I guess it's okay. So you would uh, unscrew that, loosen up some slack here, lift it off the sprocket, then do all that stuff that I told you. So I'm going to take a... Uh, picture of the model number of the opener and then uh, see if we can get the part. If we can't get the part, that means you're gonna have to replace the whole thing. And many of these uh, cheap lifts are not designed for you to be able to work on them. So we might not be able to get the part, I don't know. Okay, I don't know if you'll be able to read this. Get that little radio wire out of the way. 41 Apple 5021 dash 1 Mary dash 315 12 and this is 21 so that's nine years old and there's uh, 
I see none, but it probably has to do with the radio frequencies or something. Anyway, um, that's it for now. I'm going to see if I can get the part or else you will be uh, shown how to put a new garage door opener on here. Um, which shouldn't be really that hard. I mean, you've already got these uh, supports here, so you just unbolt this, bolt up the new, um, this track here, I'll call it a track that the chain goes on, and we would be putting on one that has a belt instead of a chain. And then uh, plug it in. I already got power here, so it wouldn't be too, too bad a job. Okay, I'll be back with the rest. Okay, we're back on this job, and that's the broken gear I showed you before. And we have got our new parts here. I would suggest not just trying to replace this one big gear because some of the other bearings and stuff are probably worn anyway. Uh, so you don't have to do the job two or three times. Just get this parts kit. I'll put a link down in the comments so you can find this if you, ha if you happen to have this um, garage door opener that I'm working on right now. Uh, I got some tools laid out that I think are going to need. Um, this does include some grease inside the kit, paper towel, a uh, power driver. I've got a small ratchet that I think I'm going to need for one of the screws. Extension vice grips, a couple of crescents, uh, more extensions, an adapter, uh, pliers, a marker. And this is a 90 degree angle tool. I may or may not need that. A bunch of bits and uh, a bunch of uh, sockets. Okay, so here we go. This is the stop. This and this piece get connected together. And as the motor moves the chain, this moves the door up and down, okay? So when the door is opening, here's a stop bolt here. What I want to do now, I'm going to mark where the chain, where this piece is so that I don't lose that position. I want this, you know, because I'm going to be undoing this part here. I want this to come back to the same place. So I'm going to put a vice grips on here and I'm going to mark with a grease pencil um, where the chain is in relationship to this big, uh, this beam. So hopefully you can see that. So I've got everything marked so that this all comes back. I'm going to loosen up over here. This all comes back to the same place, uh, which should be correct before that gear broke. Put your pliers on one nut and I, I, I don't have an extra hand now. The other nut, put your crescent wrench on it and unscrew it. Lefty loosey, unscrew it. Don't take it off. You don't want to take the chain off. You just want enough slack so you can get it over that um, sprocket, right? Right there, that sprocket. Okay, so I've got enough now. I'm going to take it off the sprocket. So the chain slides along a little ledge there on that side and a little ledge there on that side. And it's on the bigger bottom sprocket. I don't know if the replacement will have two sprockets or not. Um, that would have a little bit something to do with the speed of the door opening and closing, I guess. But other than the speed, I'm not sure it makes much difference which sprocket it's on. If somebody thinks it does, put it down in the comments. So we're going to take the chain off of there and then proceed to remove this old assembly, the broken assembly. This this piece that I was just telling you about, the, the, the chain sits on it. It's supposed to be screwed down with two screws to the housing, and it's not. It, the screws are broken off. I don't have that part, so I'm just going to have to leave it in there. I think the chain itself actually kind of keeps it in place, even though it's not screwed down. Um, so that may work all right for a while until we uh, we can get this part. And uh, so, yeah. 
Right there in the center of the screen, you can see one of the screws coming through. And the other one is, is behind this little bracket here. There's two screws kind of on a diagonal. Um, so we get that part and we'll need to replace those screws. Uh, they're probably just sitting loose in there. I might try to get that screw out. I might try to get both of them out actually so they don't fall down and fall into a gear. Anyway, uh, we've got the chain off now and we're gonna pull this assembly out of there. So I hope you can see this little clip here. It has to come off. You just, you just spread it and push to one side or the other. I'm gonna need two hands and that comes off. While we're here, I will just show you, these are your limit screws. They stick out through the side of the box and that uh, electronically connects and controls uh, the motor. We're not gonna be touching those right now. Now we're gonna take out three screws. Uh, three, if I can, there. There's one, that dark thing in the middle of your screen and there's two more, there's another one, and there's one out of, out of the frame. And we're gonna take those out, and then I think this will lift straight up. You're gonna have a metal tool near that circuit board, so unplug the whole thing right up there. I, I should have done that right in the, bin, in the beginning, uh, but no harm, no foul. Now we're gonna unplug that, so if we touch that circuit board, nothing will happen. Mm, you'll have to use a small socket like that to get at that last one because you don't have any clearance to put a long extension on there. I need two hands. Okay, so this gear is off and the little clip is off. This is gonna go straight up and out as a unit. Now, if yours still has the big gear on it, it would be like right there. Mine was busted. Um, but uh, you should still be able to get it straight out the top. Oops. I got my little cord in the way. Straight out like that. All right. Now I'm going to see if I can fish those two little broken screws out of there that hold that tracker thing. Let's see if I can get them out, out of the way. Well, this just was sitting loose on the top of that plastic piece. The two stubs, I think they're stripped. Um, I, I can turn them a little bit, but they don't thread themselves out of the metal housing. So I'm just gonna leave them in there. I don't think they're gonna fall out because I can't screw them out. I think they'll just stay there. And we're going to leave that part of this job for another day. All we're going to use out of this small parts bag is the grease, actually. You know, I could try replacing the bushings. But I don't think the bushings are worn on the original um, opener. And uh, this, this gear looks okay. It looks like it's made from a different kind of plastic, which might be a better quality plastic than this one that broke. Uh, but anyway, that's what we're going to use, the grease. And we're going to put grease on all the gears and the bushing, which rides on this shaft here. And then uh, start putting it back together. I am surprised they don't give you these uh, three. These are self-tapping screws. And what we're going to do is we're going to run them through this part here and cut threads on this. There are no threads here um, because it'll be easier to do it on the bench here. Then when we go back to install it, the threads will already be there and it should go in pretty easy. So let's do that. So if I was on my workbench, I'd put this piece into a vise, but I don't have, I'm not at my place. So I'm just gonna put the screw in, 5 sixteenths, screw in, shove it up against that and cut some threads. Make sure you go in the right direction if you use one of these. You could also cut them using a socket wrench, I suppose, uh, but I'm not going to 
try that. There's one in. It cuts pretty easy. So this is a soft metal. I wish I could show you how I'm doing this, but you really have to keep it straight. Everything straight and in alignment. So for this next one, which would be right there. Just imagine I had my screw in my power tool and I get it nice and straight alignment. Whoops. And make sure you go in the right direction. An impact tool really does better than a s screwdriver type tool. Let's get another one in. Okay, so we got all three in. Now I'm gonna take them out and put this assembly back. So when you drop it in, you're gonna be engaging this big gear with this, this other gear, my fingers touching it right now, the other gear on the other side. And you have to make sure that the holes are lined up when you push it down to engage the two gears. If they're off, um, You'd have to turn the electric motor to, to change it, which you might be able to do. But mine was off the first time, so I pulled it out, moved it just a little bit, and put it down, and now they're exactly aligned correctly. So I'm going to get those three screws in and then uh, put this other gear on the bottom and put the little clip through it. Okay, I've got two in loose. I would suggest when you're putting those in, don't use your power driver. Um, because this metal of the housing is so soft, your power driver is liable to strip out those threads that you just so carefully created. Um, so use your hand on the, uh, on the extension or just use this ratchet very easily. You don't over tighten it, okay? Okay, so this piece is gonna go back here and we're going to hope it, the chain laying down on here keeps it in its proper position. And I, I think it kind of will. Um, I'll, I'll, it'll be another job to put screws through there. And there's such small screws, it, it doesn't look to me like a terrific design. They might break again. I don't know. But... Uh, now it's time to stretch the chain back over the sprocket. This one only has one sprocket, that's fine. And then we gotta check our alignment mark. Let's uh, see if, if, if it's moved one way or the other way, you'll have to jump it on the sprocket, move it on the sprocket to get the alignment with the bar, okay? Okay, so we're back on there. And we shove this chain down on this plastic guide. I guess it should be called a guide. And you can see the black dust is from wear on this guide. The chain should be lubricated uh, once or twice a year. Um, this one could stand to be lubricated. Who knows if it's ever been lubricated. Um, you wanna make sure when you tighten up this uh, adjustment here, Make sure there's no twist in your chain. It has to be straight. If you've accidentally gotten a twist in there, take the twist out, take it off here, take the twist out and put it back on. And when we end up with a final tension on it, it should be up about halfway between here and the bottom, like halfway on the bar. Okay, I've got to get my uh, crescent wrenches. Okay, guys and gals, so uh, this is, the final clip that I recorded on my camera. I had a little technical difficulty, but really you have got 99% of what you need to fix the garage door opener if it's broken the way this one was broken. Um, the only thing left after this was to screw the box back on, covering the um, place where you were working, and check your limiters. Uh, make sure when it comes up, it stops before it hits that limit bolt that I already showed you and make sure when it comes down that it's the motor stops when the door hits the ground. If the motor keeps running, then you're gonna uh, break something again. 
Okay, give me a thumbs up or a like if this helps you out. Subscribe to my channel if you want more from Froggy. Ring the bell if you want notification. Be safe, have fun. Froggy out. Bye-bye.